Hello. Uh, I would like to start with uh, saying thank you to the organizers for all the hard work uh, they uh, have done to organize this event and it's a big pleasure to me every time to uh, give a talk in Kiev and uh, unfortunately this year uh, we have these uh, exceptional circumstances which didn't allow most of us to come to Kiev, those who are abroad, but uh, at least that's nice that we have this technology that we can uh, present our results and talk to each other online. So let me start uh, from my talk. Uh, let me start my talk. Uh, uh, my talk is entitled uh, The Lamplighter Group of Rank 2 Generated by Biodiversity Automaton, and this is a joint work with uh, my former student El Sayed Ahmed, who is currently at the University of Tampa. Uh, so it's going to be not very technical talk. I'm going to introduce uh, many notions and I will uh, explain uh, the motivation of this work. And at the end of the talk, I will uh, delve a little bit into some technical details, but most of that probably shouldn't be too complicated. So let me start from uh, the very beginning. So uh, I'm going to talk about the groups which act on rooted trees, uh, like this one. So this is a rooted binary tree. Uh, and so this group acts on these rooted trees by automorphisms. In order to describe these automorphisms, we're going to start with uh, setting up the coordinate system on this tree. Namely, every vertex of this tree will be labeled by uh, a, a finite word over an alphabet X. So you start from an alphabet X with D letters and then X star will denote the set of all finite words and the root of the tree will be uh, denoted by the empty word and this is 0, this is 1, this is 0, 0, 0, 1 and so on. So how do we describe automorphisms of these trees? Well, uh, one of the ways to do that is using so-called uh, Mealy automata uh, I'm not going to give uh, a complete formal uh, definition of that. Instead, I will just give a definition by example. So what is that? A Mealy automaton is a machine that has a certain nodes, which are called states, uh, and the states are connected to each other by the arrows, and each arrow is labeled by a pair of the input letters, uh, uh, by, by a pair of letters from the uh, alphabet X. So each state will define... Uh, an invertible transformation. Uh, each state will define a transformation over. Uh, each state will define. Uh, uh, each state will define a transformation of the set of all finite words uh, x star in the following way. So suppose we are in state A and we want to see how the state A acts on some finite word. So you read the first letter of this word, for example, let's say, let's assume that this word was zero, that this letter was zero. And then you find the arrow going out of the state A, whose label has first component zero. So in our case, this is this letter that joins state A to state D. So then you do two things. So first of all, you output the second component of that label. In our case, we output one. And then we move our uh, configuration to state D, which is the end state of the corresponding error. And then we process the rest of the word by this new state D, exactly in the same fashion. Okay? In this way, every state defines a transformation of X star, and if some additional conditions are satisfied, uh, namely that uh, every state also defines a, permutations, a permutation uh, on the set of letters, then uh, this transformation of the set of all finite words will be invertible, and we can form a group by all the transformations defined by all the states of this automaton. This group is called the automaton group generated by this automaton A. Uh, so why these groups are important? I'll just mention a few uh, examples, important examples. Well, first of all, the simplest example uh, to the Burnside problem uh, of infinite priority groups lies in this class, and this is a so-called Grigorchi group, which, is con which was constructed in uh, 1980 by Rostislav Grigorchuk. Uh, so this is infinite uh, torsion periodic, uh, this is infinite uh, periodic uh, finitely generated group. And uh, so far this is uh, one of the simplest examples of such groups. Uh, the same Grigorchuk group uh, served as the first example uh, of uh, the group of intermediate growth. So the growth which is in between polynomial and exponential. Uh, it also served the first example, the first counterexample to the day problem on amenability, namely that was uh, the first group which happened to be 
amenable but not elementary amenable. Uh, I'll mention another group which is called lamp lighter group. We're going to talk about this group a bit later. And that group served uh, as a, a building block for a counterexample for this so called strong idea conjecture and all two better numbers. And there is a lot of more examples and interesting connections, but we don't have time to talk about all of them now. So, uh, the point of this slide is that uh, it's kind of natural to try to attempt to classify these groups generated by automata. And of course, steps in that direction have been done already. So, let me start from notation. Uh, I'm going to denote by mn automata, m state automata over n letter alphabet. So, 2 2 automata, 2 state automata over 2 letter alphabet. Those were classified back in 2000 in the seminal work by Grigorchuk, Nikoshevich, and Sushansky. Uh, and it turns out that there are six groups. Five of them are quite simple groups, uh, not in mathematical sense, but uh, just easy to understand. And uh, one of them, the sixth one, happens to be the lamplighter group that I mentioned on the previous slide. So we're going to talk about that group later. Uh, when you increase the number of states, the complexity grows essentially uh, really uh, high. Uh, so the number of uh, non-symmetric through two automata is uh, 194, and uh, in a big project which we kind of completed in 2008, including seven authors, we proved that there is at most 115 non-isomorphic pairwise non-isomorphic groups. Most likely it's less than 115, but this is what we were able to show. So when you go to the class of 5-2 automata, you immediately get this wonderful counterexample, wonderful uh, uh, example of a Grigorchuk group. So the question that uh, is quite interesting is, uh, is there a smaller Grigorchuk group generated by 4-state automata over 2-letter alphabet? Of course, you could ask other questions. You can increase the number of letters in the alphabet, but let's concentrate on this one. So. Uh, back in 2014, with my uh, master student uh, Luis Caponi, we uh, started to investigate that question. And we uh, understood that there are 7471 non symmetric 4 2 automata. And we proved that uh, all but six generate groups that are either finite or have elements of infinite order. We didn't prove anything about those six exceptional groups. Uh, we just were not able to say at that time whether they have elements of infinite order or not and whether they're finite or not. And all of these six groups are generated by so-called bireversible automata. Uh, and this is a very interesting class of automata that I'm going to uh, talk about in more details a bit later. And uh, specifically, at this moment, I will just mention that uh, this class is specifically hard from computational point of view. Uh, so uh, computer... Uh, is uh, is not really good in solving uh, various algorithmic questions related to this bireversible automata. And in some sense, it's uh, it's the opposite of uh, the class of contracting groups. So for bireversible automata, for reversible automata, uh, contraction essentially doesn't happen when you start from a word and you go down uh, deeper and deeper in the tree uh, by taking the sections of the original word. Uh, okay. So, well, let me talk a little bit about these six groups. So, two of them, uh, so two special 4-2 groups, uh, were more or less understood uh, in 2015 uh, in my joint work with Ines Kleeman in, and Matthew Pekantin. And uh, so we had to use the, we had to develop the so-called technique of orbit automata to prove that uh, these groups contain torsion-free subsemi groups. So this is one of them, and this is the other one of them. So they are related in certain way. Uh, they're kind of dual to each other in certain way. Uh, and we can manage to prove, uh, we were able to manage to prove that uh, none of them is a kind of new Grigorchi group. Uh, so uh, a little bit later, we said Sitki in 2016, we completely understand, uh, we completely understood the structure of one of these groups, uh, namely the group G from uh, the first slide here. And we showed that uh, the structure is uh, quite interesting. It is an extension of index 2 of a rank 2 lamplighter group Z2 squared with Z. And we give a specific presentation. Uh, 
so specific elements that uh, correspond to the generators of each of these base groups. Um, okay, so let me recall what is LM fighter group in general and uh, maybe just set up some framework. So for an abelian group A, the lamp lighter type group is a group which is just a read product of this abelian group A with Z. Uh, and that's a, uh, the read product in the following sense. So you start from uh, an infinite uh, direct sum of uh, uh, infinite, infinite number of uh, copies of uh, A. Uh, and this is a countable sum. And then you act... Uh, you take a semi-direct product of this sum with z, where the generator of z, let's call it t, acts on this infinite sum just by shifting the index. So this infinite sum, we're going to call it b, and it's going to be a base group. And the idea is that this base group uh, is generated by the commuting conjugates of a by powers of t. Okay, so in particular, if we want to build a lamp lighter, we're going to have to have lots of commuting elements which all will live in this base group. So, a natural question is how do we get many commuting elements in uh, the group of automorphisms of T? And uh, one of the natural sources is uh, the group of so-called spherical homogeneous homeomorphisms. Uh, sorry, spherical homogeneous automorphisms. So, what are those? An automorphism of a tree is called spherical homogeneous if it acts on the kth letter of each word by a permutation dependent only on k. So, for example, it doesn't depend on the word itself, it just depends on the position of the letter. So, for example, uh, it may act on the third letter always by permutation that sends 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. So, uh, when uh, x, uh, so the algebraic structure of this group is actually quite simple. It's just uh, the uncountable uh, product of the symmetric group uh, on x uh, with itself. Uh, and, uh, of course, when x has cardinality 2, this group is abelian, but even when x has a cardinality more than 2, there is a natural uh, uncountable abelian group zd to infinity sitting inside this group of spherical homogeneous automorphisms, and it is made of those spherical homogeneous automorphisms that um, act uh, at each vertex uh, as a power of some fixed long cycle. So we have a large abelian subgroup sitting inside the group of all automorphisms of the tree. Uh, and the observation that uh, we had was that all known instances of lamp lighters have uh, this base group of the form infinite sum of zd to the k inside this uh, large abelian subgroup sitting inside the spherical homogeneous automorphisms of x star. Okay, so this is the source for the base group in most of the known examples. Okay, so now let's talk about how we actually generate these uh, groups and uh, how we work with them. So, uh, in the introduction I told that you can describe automorphisms of the tree by uh, Mille Automata, and that is one way which works, uh, but there is kind of a dual way to that. So, instead of consider uh, instead of considering the action on the tree itself, we can consider the action on the boundary of this tree, which we denote by x infinity. Uh, and the boundary consists of all infinite words over x that corresponds, of course, to that corresponds to all infinite passes from uh, the root of the tree to infinity. Okay. Uh, each automorphism of the tree will naturally induce uh, a transformation of x infinity. Well, topologically, x infinity is homeomorphic to the Cantor set, and those transformations will be homeomorphisms. Uh, but in this talk, we are not going to talk uh, about topological structure. Instead, we're going to look uh, into the algebraic structure of x infinity. Uh, so at this time, I will just uh, be calling those homeomorphisms transformations of x infinity. So each automorphism of x star induces transformation of x infinity. Uh, and also some transformations of x infinity will induce automorphisms of x star. It's not the case that each transformation of x infinity induces automorphism of x star, but we're going to talk about those that do induce. So uh, now how to define the uh, transformations of uh, the boundary. Well, you can put an algebraic structure uh, on this boundary, and then you can consider various algebraic transformations of the boundary. 
Uh, and there are multiple ways to do that. So you can, for example, consider the boundary as the ring of dyadic integers, or you can consider them as the infinite dimensional uh, module uh, over ZD, uh, or kind of vector space when uh, D is prime. Uh, but in this talk, we're going to uh, identify the boundary of the rooted tree with uh, the ring of formal power series over ZD in the following way. So if you have infinite path, a0, a1, a2, and so on, in the boundary of the tree, we're going to we're gonna associate uh, the following power series, a0 plus a1t plus a2t squared plus and so on, uh, sitting inside zd of t, the ring of all formal power series. So as a baby example, you can consider uh, a fixed uh, power series g of t, and you can consider a transformation of uh, the ring of all formal power series that uh, to a given power series f of t, just adds this fixed power series g of t. And it's quite easy to see that this transformation is uh, a spherical homogeneous, it induces a spherical homogeneous automorphism of x star. A little bit more involved examples include so-called affine transformations of uh, the ring of all formal power series. And so they are defined in the following way. So uh, now you fix uh, uh, you fix uh, some uh, formal power series F, which is invertible, the ring of formal power series, and fix another power series B, which need not be invertible. And then you define a transformation, which we denote by pi FB, which sends a power series G to power series FG plus B. So we multiply by F and then add B. So this is a natural affine group, and it turns out that this group defines uh, also automorphisms of the tree X star, uh, and the following proposition, well, in this form, it was probably formulated for the first time in uh, my paper with Said Sitki, uh, but uh, in a bit more general settings, it was uh, known already earlier uh, in, uh, by, it was uh, known earlier uh, by Alenik and uh, Sushansky from the paper from 2004. Okay, so what's the idea? If we fix two power series, f of t and b of t, given by uh, a0 plus a1t and so on, and b0 plus b1t plus and so on. Uh, so first of all, the automorphism of the tree induced by uh, this affine transformation is finite state even if both f and b are rational power series. So they are pre-periodic and uh, or eventually periodic and they correspond to rational functions. And moreover, you can describe explicitly uh, how the automata look like. So namely, the output function of the automaton will be like that. If you want to act by pi fb on x, you're going to get a0 x plus b0. And uh, the most interesting uh, thing is how to compute the state. If you are in the state pi fb and you read letter x, you move to the state pi f, and then here you have some expression dependent on x, f, and b, where sigma is just the shift map on the ring of formal power series. So for power series c of t, c0 plus c1 t plus c2 t squared, and so on, the, sh the shift map is defined to be just c1 plus c2 t plus c3 t squared, and so on. Okay, so note that we have a multiplication by the same f uh, in both the state and its section. So just the, uh, the shift uh, here may be a bit different. Okay, so here's uh, the simplest example, and that's the uh, famous example from uh, that seminal paper by Grigorchuk, Nikoshek, and Sushansky from uh, 2000. So here we consider just multiplication by uh, a, a polynomial, f of t is equal to 1 plus t. Of course, this is an element of uh, power series ring as well. So we just have all the coefficients except the first two are zero. Uh, right, and so how does it work? How do we compute it? Uh, well, so you just look at uh, multiplication by one plus t. Uh, you, you multiply by one plus t some power series, for example, starting from zero, right? So that corresponds to reading zero first and then reading a1, a2, and so on. So if you write out the multiplication, you can decompose it in the following way. So uh, the constant term of the uh, output series will be zero, and the rest of the series can be written uh, as follows. We can factor t out, and then we have one plus t times the shifted series, shifted original series that we had. 
right? So we just remove that, and instead of a1t plus a2t squared, we have a1 plus a2t plus and so on. So what that tells us is that if we read 0, we have to output 0, and then we have to act on the, uh, on the tail, on the rest of the word, again by multiplication by 1 plus t. So that corresponds to this arrow in the automaton, and the other arrows correspond to uh, the next three lines. Uh, well, the group itself turns out that is isomorphic to Z2 with Z, and that's, again, as I said, the simplest, the simplest example of the lamp group. group. Uh, just a few words about the history. This affine automorphism have been used uh, for some time uh, by different people uh, in different contexts. In 2005, Sylvain Steinberg considered a formal power series uh, over uh, a finite abelian group, and they were able to generate uh, H with Z, where H was a finite abelian group. Uh, so Bartholdi and Sunik in 2006 uh, also were able to generate uh, Z over NZ uh, to the D with Z. And also they considered uh, the ring of uh, n-adic integers and multiplication by m, and also uh, you have a fine transformations of uh, this ring Zn uh, generated by an automaton. So quite recently, uh, this was uh, the paper that was just published last year, uh, Skipper, Witzel, and Zaremski uh, constructed for every n a finite states of similar groups of type fn-1, but not of type fn. Uh, as the affine group of the rings of so-called S integers of a global function field. Okay, so uh, I probably don't have time right now to go into details. Uh, I'll mention one more uh, very recent result by Skipper and Steinberg. It was published uh, this year. I think that's the current volume, uh, the current issue of the group's geometry and dynamics. Uh, and they constructed also families of bireversible automata for uh, the ring of formal power series over certain rings, uh, right? And the multiplication is uh, by uh, rational functions of a given form, a very specific form. And the groups that uh, they're getting were uh, isomorphic to the uh, breathe products of uh, the additive group of that ring and Z. So also on pleasure type groups. Okay. So... This last example and the example uh, examples that I mentioned before, those exceptional groups, uh, are very specific uh, uh, types of automata, which are called reversible and bireversible. So let me mention a little bit more about them. So an automaton with the set of states Q over an alphabet X is said to be reversible if each letter of X induces a permutation of Q. So what does it mean? So, of course, uh, the states act on the letters, right? right? So A, for example, swaps 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. But we can think about that in the opposite way. We can think that the letters of the alphabet will act on the states. So, for example, uh, if we consider a letter 0, then when we are at state A and we read 0, we move to state D. When we're at state D and we read 0, we move to B. From there, by 0, we move to C. And from there, by 0, we move to A back. So, z 0 defines a permutation of the states where A goes to D, D goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to A. Similarly, for 1, uh, 1 moves A to D and D back to A. And 1 moves C to B and B back to C. So, in this particular case, all of this... Uh, uh, transformations of the set of states are invertible, and uh, this is exactly the case when we call an automaton uh, reversible. Okay, so that means that uh, every uh, letter of the alphabet defines a permutation on the set of states. Uh, these permutations will uh, generate so called syntactic monoid, uh, which is uh, a standard construction in uh, computer science and formal language theory. Um, okay. So, for a long time, all known examples of groups generated by bireversible automata were uh, virtually free. So, we can mention, uh, uh, for example, a famous example of Alyosin that was constructed in the beginning of 1980s. And uh, it was uh, kind of a long-standing question which uh, was open for more than 20 years. Uh, if that automaton generates a free group of rank 3, which was finally solved in 2005 by uh, Maria and Yaroslav Rabetz. 
Um, so, and as I said, so there were quite a lot of constructions and most of them were, were virtually free. So it was quite a big of surprise when Evgen Bandarenko, uh, Daniela D'Angeli and Emanuel Rodara in 2015 constructed a three-state uh, self-dual automaton generating the lamplighter group Z3 with Z, like this. Uh, okay, so it turns out that this bioreversible automata can generate groups which are not virtually free. When Plytro group is solvable, it's virtually, I'm sorry, it's solvable, so uh, it's definitely not virtually free. So, uh, in this talk, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce the third group out of those six, uh, which we analyzed with uh, El Sayed Ahmed. And so, this is a group generated by the following automaton. Um, and we proved that it is just a rank 2 Lamplighter group uh, Z2 squared with Z and uh, it sits inside the affine transformations of the uh, X star and uh, in terms of affine transformations it can be given uh, by the following transformations. So we multiply by this uh, rational function or power series corresponding to this rational function and we add corresponding uh, shifts. Okay. So let me say a few words about the idea of the proof. So first of all, uh, so we have z squared, z2 squared inside. So that's a Klein 4 group. So we have to find this Klein 4 group inside G. So this can be done by observing that uh, elements x, y, and z, which are a, b inverse, a, c inverse, and a, d inverse, uh, generate uh, a decline group. Uh, and moreover, uh, if you decompose them uh, and consider the action uh, of each of them on the left subtree and on the right subtree, which is called uh, the Rith recursion, uh, you will obviously see that uh, these elements are spherical homogeneous. So we have uh, a group of order 4, a 4 uh, Klein 4 group, uh, and uh, this group sits inside spherical homogeneous uh, group of uh, automorphisms of this X star. And then, of course, by construction, G uh, is just isomorphic, is generated by X, Z, and A. So Y is equal to X, Z, so we can throw it out. And then once you add A to X and Z and Y, we're going to get all A, B, C, D. Okay, so we want to construct now, we want to understand this group X, Z, and A. Uh, for that, we uh, first mention we first prove uh, one technical lemma that proves that uh, the atomorphism A lies in the normalizer of the group of all spherical homogeneous atomorphisms, which means that conjugates of any spherical uh, homogeneous atomorphism by powers of A are also in this abelian group uh, of spherically homogeneous atomorphisms. So in particular, we can define the following notation. Uh, we can raise S into a formal uh, uh, Laurent polynomial of A, right? Uh, by definition, it's going to be just S conjugated by A to A1 times S conjugated by A to AI2 and so on. In particular, we can define X to P of A and Z to P of A for any Laurent polynomial P of A, uh, and so that's the notation for the ring of Laurent polynomials. So the proposition that we need to prove now is that uh, G is just X Z A, is isomorphic to Z2 squared with Z. And to prove that, we just need to show that uh, all of these elements, X to P of A, Z to Q of A, are non trivial for all choices of P and Q. Uh, for all non trivial choices, of course, of uh, P and Q. So, uh, how do we do that? Uh, well, that's kind of the most technical part of this talk. Uh, we define certain polynomials, phi n of A. And then for each polynomial P of A, we define another polynomial Psi Q of A, uh, which has uh, the following form. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. So that should be, of course, uh, Psi P of A, uh, not Psi Q of A. Uh, so this is just the sum of this Ci, Phi I minus 1 of A, where Phi uh, I minus 1 are defined here. And Ci are the coefficients of P. Uh, and now the next technical lemma considers the sections of uh, an element of the form x, p of a, z, q of a at each vertex of the first level. And we prove that this section will be again of the same form, 
we just have to modify the original polynomials. If the polynomials were p and q, now we're going to have this kind of polynomials of A inverse. Uh, right, and same uh, if uh, we had polynomials of A inverse. Okay, so that defines a, a dynamical system on uh, the square of the ring of all uh, Laurent polynomials, right? So PQ will go to this pair of polynomials and you just have to analyze this dynamical system and there are certain standard ways to do that. Uh, well, namely, uh, you just start from uh, the smallest possible uh, relation and then you get a contradiction uh, by getting even shorter relations. So that's the idea. Okay, so uh, I'll just mention at the end a, a general approach that we are currently working on with Eugen Bandarenko. So all of these examples represent just a starting point for a general framework. Namely, uh, in general, we consider actions of the affine groups of the fields of rational functions on so-called Bruhatitz trees. trees. Uh, and we provide a criteria on bioreversibility of induced actions on the rooted trees. Uh, and most importantly, we understand the duality in terms of the relations in the affine groups. So this is the ongoing work, and hopefully we'll be able to report and uh, produce the uh, preprint quite soon. Uh, so the final thing that I'll just mention is that out of those six groups, currently there is only one which we are not sure whether it's going to be... Uh, well, we cannot prove yet that it's not going to be an example of uh, the smallest group or two group. Uh, namely, this is a group which all calculations show that it must be a free group of rank 4, but uh, the proofs of these facts are usually quite tough. So uh, that's the last group that we still have to worry about. Okay, so I will stop here. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, thank you again for the organizers.